Is it okay to do it out here? Has it stopped raining? Are we safe or do I better do this in the blooming alley? Let's give this a go. Needs must, we'll move into the blooming alley. Before I get into anything, if you have any questions about anything you see here that is leaving the patio and you say, oh my goodness, I have my orchid in a similar setup, I better change something. Before you change anything, please run it by me in the comments first because it can very well happen that the similar setup with your orchid in your conditions is going to be just fine. And we can talk about more details of why some things went wrong here based on on my climate conditions and the circumstances that involve all these failures. Thank you for being here, for spreading the warm vibe on the patio that is currently missing. So I appreciate your company. All right, we're going to start with the gaggle of Tolumnias. And I'm going to tell you in order of what happened and why they declined and what part I had in it. <laughs> I had the biggest part. The first two I've been battling with scale since 2021 when I dropped the ball and wasn't checking for pests often enough. Despite my best efforts, they never recovered. So they are leaving the patio. They have already left the building. All of these had already left the building. I was just waiting to show you which ones we won't be seeing on the patio anymore. The back two are Tolumnias that I had put into a semi-hydro setup with small lava rock. To the right is Carmen. Unfortunately, she is leaving the patio and to the left, drum roll is my Tolumnia pomegranate. Now, these two were vigorous enough for me to try semi-hydroponics on them. And if I could have gotten the scale population under control out of the bases, the tiny, tiny, delicate bases, then I'm sure we would have been successful with them. But unfortunately, no matter how vigorous my Tolumnias were, you can see what happened. I fought and fought and fought and I lost the fight. So they are also leaving the patio. One top tip about the Tolumnias, avoid scale at all costs. Even my trusted garlic infused alcohol was no match to the damage that they do at the base of Tolumnias. Anyway, this is mine, Vanda Schutteno. It is starting to drizzle again. We may need to move to the blooming alley. Anyway, moving on swiftly, we're going into the blooming alley. Where were we? <laughs> oh, yes. Vanda Focata Schutteno. <clears throat> she was a fantastic little Vanda for me. And I thought that the lava rock, the semi hydroponic setup, would do her very, very well, being that she is such a vigorous little Vanda Falcata. Clearly, I was wrong. No pest issues, no nothing. This is all because of wrong culture. And allow me to emphasize one more time because of my conditions. So if you have your Vanda Falcata in a similar setup, trust me, it works. Because my Vanda Falcata, the classic, one, the not specialized one, is doing fabulously in a self-watering setup. This one didn't appreciate it. But wait, there's more. As mentioned in other videos, we were not going to see Doria Ternopsis Sogo Vivian again. Well, I figured why not include her? She was already a goner a couple of weeks ago, but here she is because I was waiting to make a consolidated little bag, bin bag for all of them. So we won't be seeing Doria Ternopsis on the patio anymore. Just with beautiful, beautiful, beautiful images of her blooms when she was once upon a time doing very, very well. I decimated her one summer because I got frustrated with all the scale. And unfortunately, I let years and years of frustration out on her with garlic alcohol. I know it sounds like garlic alcohol is suddenly a big boo-boo. It is not. It is the way I administered it on this particular orchid that did her in. And I'm going to link that video in the description so that you can see what I did. <laughs> and I had advise you not to do the same. I stick with my garlic alcohol. User error, not the product. Hmm, we've had that before on the patio as well. <laughs> Copper toxicity, anyone? This is Vanda Greenhopper, or so they say. I really don't know what it is, but I do believe there is a rhynchostylus in its parentage, in its ancestry somewhere. And it arrived five years ago in my collection with these black spots. So it's been diseased from jump. 
However, it kept giving me vibes that it was trying, so I tried along with it. Forgive my biology experiment in here, but this is how this vanda has been handled from jump, growing wonderful roots in the pot. The roots are still viable, and whatever all the black things are that you see around there, that is not mosquito larvae. <laughs> Those are just seeds from something that has blown into my water. Anyway, green hopper. I am sorry, but I am done. I think five years is long enough to try and get this orchid to recover. Whatever she has, I don't want it on the patio anymore. Now I normally like to end videos like this on a positive note, but I can't. Not with this one, because the last orchid that is leaving the patio, I don't want to be touching any more orchids after that. So I'm going to give you a pre-positive parting. <laughs> well, positive so far. Here is my mailman, the one with black rot and cold damage and all these things that have happened to this orchid in the past. Now, let me see if I can get you to see what I see. Do you see that root nubbin and little protrusions? Not just the eye, but underneath. So, the last pseudobulb that was in actual fact viable is almost gone. It's still firm. It is not so whoop, it is soft. <laughs> Ooh, can tell I haven't touched this orchid. So anyway, yeah, it is being absorbed fast and furiously. And if she stands a chance, I will have to say that will only depend on the weather. And currently, if the conditions continue like this, as in too cold for this orchid, not enough light for this orchid, then we at least could witness that a single pseudobulb on a cattleya orchid can be propagated, can be saved, despite us being a long, long way away from even seeing any blooms. I'm just going to cross my fingers, I'm not holding my breath, but I just wanted to share that with you because I thought, well, hey now, and now we just need spring to be spring and not winter. And let's move on to my last orchid because then I am safe to touch everything else again. <laughs> And I appreciate you already having given this video a like, <laughs> as well as subscribing to the channel, despite the fact that this is not one of those videos where you think, yeah, no, I can't learn anything here. <laughs> Trust me when I say, yes, you can learn something on this channel. One of the factors that you can learn is that no matter how many years of experience anybody has growing orchids, we will lose them for many, many different reasons. And I would say 95% of the time it's user error. Still, I hope that you do subscribe to the channel. That would be greatly appreciated. And if we want to get the tiny violins out, especially on a video like this, Catlia Shiliriana is leaving the building. She was diagnosed with Fusarium in 2023. I still have a tiny little piece. It was in the same pot. Don't know if it's going to make it, but the big piece, it's history. I do say that with a bit of relief in my voice because I have another orchid that has a Fusarium issue and it's not ideal to be having Fusarium infected orchids in a grow space that is a bit of a tight squeeze at the moment. So phew, one less orchid like that to worry about when I have a whole other gaggle that still needs to make it. So if you missed it at the beginning, anything you saw here and you're thinking, yikes, I need to change my setup. It's not working for her. Stop and ask me first and we'll talk about it. And you're probably going to be okay with the way you grow your orchid in your climate and conditions as opposed to me. Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate your support. Let me love and leave you by wishing you a beautiful day on the condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. <laughs> Double oops. I wanted to show you how my OG insolence cakey failed. Should have mentioned that in the main body of the video, but it happened quite some time ago, so all I have left is this image. What happened here and what I didn't do was the stem that the keiki was attached to was touching the water all the time, even though the roots were suspended above and every once in a while I let the roots touch the water, they were starting to absorb water, but the fact that the stem was always wet caused the keiki to get stem rot. And with that, insolence OG is no more. The good news is that Insolence 2.0 is doing well. At least I got to the point of growing a keiki. Should this happen again, next time I know better. A stem has to dry out as well. Oh, the learning curve of orchids. Thank you for not clicking off too soon. Bye.